So this video is going to make a lot of my audience very, very angry with me. They're going to be very cross. They're going to be very upset. Perhaps many of them will unsubscribe from my channel, which would I'd be very upset about. And I, I apologize, but I want everybody to keep in mind that I'm doing this mostly for fun and in jest. But today we're going to be talking about the five most overrated Linux distributions ever created. So I think it should be a little fun, but I want to put up put some provisos out there some warnings some trigger warnings out there before i actually jump in first when i say overrated i don't mean bad i might mean bad but i don't always mean bad a lot of the distributions on this list i actually considered to be quite good in fact a couple of them i would consider fantastic but they are overrated so just because I say your distribution is overrated doesn't mean that I think that it's bad. A couple of them I do think are bad, but that those aren't necessarily things that are connected in my brain. So that's the first one. The second thing that I want to say out there is that just because I say your distribution is overrated doesn't mean that I'm coming after you. These are not personal attacks in any way. So don't take it personally. Don't get too defensive about it. It's just all in fun. So let's go ahead and talk about the five most overrated Linux distributions. But before we do, if you drop a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It really does help the channel and uh, it, it would probably move past some of the negative thumbs down that I'm no doubt going to be getting because of the amount of vitriol that I'll hear in the comments section below. So let's talk about this. So number five on the list is Solus OS. Now Solus OS is a distribution that is a, it's a dreamers distribution. And when I say it's a dreamers distribution, what I mean is their developers are dreamers. They have had many different plans over the course of their existence. And many of those plans are still in development and there's no end in sight to those plans, right? They continuously change. Now they're changing to a different distro. Basically they're, they're moving from Solus's base development tools to Serpent OS based development tools. They'll still be called solo OS, but it's very, very confusing. Th their desktop environment was attached to their distro for a long time, which called Budgie OS and, uh, or not Budgie OS, but Budgie, right? And that was connected to Solus for a long time. And then the development team kind of split and they had their, a little, you know, kerfuffle amongst the developers and Budgie was split off and Solus went its own direction and now they're back together again. It, it's like a soap opera is the way that I'd explain it. And the reason why I say that it's overrated isn't necessarily because it's bad, but because it's hard to trust a distribution that has plans like that and constantly moves the goalposts towards what they're looking to do and you don't really know where it's going. Like, do we think that the Serpent OS plans are going to be something that they stick with, or are they going to change the plans again in a couple of years? So you really can't say that it's a distribution that is stable in its execution of what their plans are, because they move and they change all the time. So Solus OS is number five on the list. I put it at number five because I'm convinced that very few people actually use it, to be honest with you. I have... Honestly, to tell you, I only know one person who really likes Solus OS. Well, two. Uh, one of them is a developer of Solus OS. The other one is Josh. So those are the only two that I really know that have ever used or spent a lot of time with Solus. I'm sure there are other Solus OS users out there, uh, but uh, I don't meet them very often. So that's number five on the list. Number four on the list is Elementary OS. Elementary OS is a distribution that I have a history of not liking, so I will very be very upfront with the fact that I am biased against it. But you can't deny that that distribution has promise and has promised many things over the course of the last many years. And many of those things have not been delivered. And it feels at this point that it's kind of abandoned where because they have had a kerfuffle amongst their developers. They, the developers have gone separate ways. They fought over money because everybody fights over money, which is you know, dumb, but whatever. And, you know, you have, I, I guess if the, I was talking about millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars, I'd probably want to fight about it too, but I ain't got that opportunity. So whatever, that's beside the point. <laughs> the, the point is, is that elementary OS has kind of fallen by the wayside despite its immense promise over the course of the last few years. It was one of those distributions that even got covered in the mainstream press because it was a quote-unquote new Linux distro that offered a lot of the cohesiveness that 
people were looking for in Linux. It was very Mac OS like it was very structured in its UI in its approach to updates and stuff like that. And since then it has fallen by the wayside. And even though that's true, I wouldn't say that that's the reason why it's overrated. I would say that it's overrated simply because the people who really enjoy or, or at least enjoyed Elementary OS had such high hopes for it and prodded it along to other people, but none of the promise was ever backed up with solid action. So it, this isn't even the first time where we thought it was kind of abandoned where. Like several years ago, they also kind of fell off in terms of the updates. We had no clue what was happening. Eventually, an update did appear, and then, you know, they went back on what feels like a hiatus. So nobody that really knows what's going on, yet there's still a group of people out there who have high, high hopes for elementary OS and, the you know, the promises that have been made. Whether or not those promises will ever be delivered on, you know, is another thing altogether. So elementary OS is number four on the list. Number three on the list is Manjaro. Now, Manjaro, when it first came out, had a purpose. Now, whether their stated purpose was this or not, you can't deny that one of the things that it did was it made Arch Linux easy to install. It also had the stated goal of making Arch Linux more stable, and that's still its stated goal to this day. It's basically Arch Linux, but with a delayed release cycle. So instead of all the updates being pushed right out into the open for everybody to test basically as a guinea pig like with Arch, Manjaro holds it back. Also, Manjaro has less reliance on the AUR. It doesn't push the AUR nearly as much as Arch itself does. So the idea behind Manjaro is a more stable Arch Linux distribution. And you could probably claim that it does deliver on that. I don't really know how stable it actually is. I haven't used it in many years. But the user base, which is quite large, it's probably the largest Arch-based distribution out there, is very passionate about it, yet its use case isn't as important as they seem to think that it is. If you really want a stable distribution, you're not going to go the Arch direction at all. You're going to go to Debian, or you're going to go to Ubuntu, or whatever. You're not going to look towards Arch. Now, my biggest problem with Manjaro has always been that if you want to have the benefits of Arch, the big X, if you want to have the benefit of Arch, which is the AUR. For me, that, that the shining star of using Arch has always been the AUR. And if you enable that on Manjaro, you remove the benefits of using Manjaro. It's no longer, once you've enabled the AUR and you started to use the AUR, it's no longer a stable distribution. Therefore... Manjaro is weird in that situation where it's kind of touting the benefits of Arch but not giving you the main benefit of Arch. It's very weird in that in that regard. And I've never really gotten it, to be honest with you. And uh, I know a lot of people have. Now, now, if you wanted to argue that the reason why it exists is because it made Arch easy to install during a period of time when Arch was not easy to install, you could argue that that was the case. If that's still the case, that's kind of weird because Arch is no longer hard to install. So... I don't know. Uh, Manjaro is definitely, in my opinion, overrated. And that's number three on the list. Number two on the list, oh boy. Oh, it's going to piss a lot of people off. But Linux Mint is number two on the list. Now, I have made claims over the course of the last three years or so since I started this channel that Linux Mint is useless. I have talked about how Linux Mint is pointless. I've talked about how Linux Mint is weird. I've talked about how Linux Mint and their fan base are very touchy, <laughs> uh, which I still believe is, is is true. Now, I have, of course, more experience with Linux Mint now than I did when I made my Linux Mint is Useless video back in 2021 or whatever it was. So I have more experience with Linux Mint at this point. But all that being said, the idea behind Linux Mint is what? So... That's my question and has, has been my question for quite a while. What is the purpose of Linux Mint right now? Previously, I would argue that Linux Mint had the purpose of being Ubuntu, but with a different desktop environment and with a better and easier, more new user focused software package, right? They offered a lot of tools and they offered a better post-installation method and, and setup and documentation and all this stuff, right? They were very much a new user 
user-focused distribution. And you could argue that they're still that, right? That they're very much still a very new user-focused distribution. I would argue instead that they're a protest distro. Now, I know that that's going to make a lot of people mad because when I say protest distro, what you think of, you're going to think of dev one, you're going to think of Artix, you're going to think of distributions that are protesting system D, you know, and I would argue that Linux Mint is an Ubuntu protest distro. They're still based on Ubuntu, of course, for their major releases. They're still very much tied to the Ubuntu release cycle. All of their distribution releases are tied to an Ubuntu release cycle, but they don't like the way that Ubuntu works. You can tell that because of the their disinterest in snaps. You can tell that by some of the things that their developers have said over the course of the last few years. They're very much not happy with the direction that Canonical has taken Ubuntu, and therefore have they have chosen to take their distribution another direction, despite still being reliant on Ubuntu as their base. Right? It's one of the reasons why I've argued, and one of the reasons why I argued in the Linux Mint is useless video, that instead of focusing on Ubuntu, they should focus on Debian. But that is another argument altogether. The reason why I think that they're overrated is because they have become there's this mythos surrounding Linux Mint that they are the premier new user distro. And that may or may not be true. I won't argue either way. But that mythos has given a legend quality that doesn't it doesn't really deserve. Because really, at the end of the day, it's just a protest distro. It's just a distribution that is Ubuntu, but without all the things that make Ubuntu Ubuntu, if that makes any sense. They've taken Ubuntu, they've carved out all the parts that make Ubuntu Ubuntu, except for like the installer and some of the software packaging, and they've made it their own, which is fine. It's There's nothing wrong with that. It's just, it's not, it doesn't automatically make it into this fantastic distribution that every new Linux user should use. Now, it doesn't mean that every new Linux user shouldn't use it also. I, I'm not going to argue either way with those people. I'm just saying that Linux Mint is overrated. That's that's my argument, I guess. I will admit, and I should have put this up front, that Linux that I'm a little biased, a little biased against Linux Mint. I just never have really cared for it all that much. I've never really seen the purpose of it. If you're if you want to use Ubuntu, just go use Ubuntu, right? If Linux Mint just touted itself as Ubuntu but with a different desktop environment, that'd be fine with me. And it's fine the way it is, of course. I don't have to approve of everything. <laughs> I'm not like the the grandmaster of the Linux world. I don't have to approve of everything. Linux Mint is just not for me. Uh, I also don't think that it is as fantastic as everybody else thinks it is. But again, that might be my bias showing. So number two on the list is Linux Mint. Uh, people are very passionate about Linux Mint, despite the fact that the people who are very passionate about it probably aren't using it. now. I'm sure some of them are. I don't, <laughs> I don't need to hear in the comment section about how passionate you are about actually using Linux Mint. I'm sure there are many people out there who, I mean, it's a very popular Linux distribution. What I'm saying is that the people, it seems, that are the most passionate are also people who aren't actually using it. Uh, they, maybe they started off on it and it was their first Linux distro, so they have very fond memories of it. And that has led them to be very defensive of it, which is, again, it's, it's fine. Uh, but I would just like to remind you that it's a Linux distro. It's not Jesus. Okay. I'm just putting it out there. Okay. Uh, so if you thought number two pissed people off, whoo, <laughs> wait till you hear number one. Number one is Arch Linux. Now, <laughs> I know what you're thinking, Matt. Weren't you an Arch fanboy like half a second ago? Yes. Yes, I was an Arch fanboy. And I still maintain that the AUR is fantastic. Maybe a little overrated towards what I actually think it is. And definitely not for everybody. But Arch Linux is overrated, and I would argue that of the ones that are on this list, it's the most overrated, which is num the reason why it's number one. That's usually how lists work, Matt. Good job. <laughs> number one on the list is Arch Linux for a reason. It's number one for a reason, and that reason is is that it's so overrated that their users have become a meme. And this meme isn't even new. It's been around for a very long time. I use Arch Linux, by the way, right? You have heard this over and over and over again and to the point where it is a meme it's not even a good meme it's a meme that has been around for so long it's over the, the meme has become a meme if that makes any sense so arch linux was always a thing right it was always something that people were proud of because it was hard to install now 
Every time I say that people were proud of being able to install Arch Linux, there's somebody in the comments section who's like, imagine being proud of being able to install Linux. Like, <laughs> I understand that it's a weird thing to be proud of, but there's a reason why people touted the fact that they use Arch, and that reason is because it was considered difficult to install. That difficulty of installation was the primary reason why people who use it considered themselves special. If you think about it, past the installation of Arch Linux, what actually makes Arch special? It's not the only rolling release in the world. I would argue that the AUR probably is the only other thing besides the installation that makes Arch special, and it's the only one that remains. The AUR is fantastic. It's spectacular, even. It definitely puts to shame many other repositories out there. But the installation aspect of their argument is gone, yet their arrogance remains. It does. It hasn't, you know, it has fallen by the wayside a little bit, of course, uh, to be replaced by the next one on the list, because there is a next one on the list. <laughs> uh, it's actually an honorable mention, because we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> the, the, the point is, is that Arch Linux has a fan base that has memified themselves. Not mummified, but memified. I don't know if memified is actually a word, but it's going to be very, very soon. And they have made it so that people look at Arch as a meme distro. Even though it's a fantastic distribution, it's a really good distribution, and if you want a rolling release, it's one of the best out there that you can use. I would argue that their development method is not so great, to be honest with you, that they, that they meander through without any real leadership, and that they have no clear vision for their distribution, and that that lack of distribution vision has caused many problems over the course of the last few months even, where things have been released out into the wild that really shouldn't have been. If you ask my bud Steve, you'd, you'd hear many, many words with many, many expletives about the, you know, grub and the grub situation, right? So Arch has had many problems, and yet their user base still considers themselves uh, very, very happy that they are Arch users when they eh, probably should just tone it down just a bit. So I mentioned an honorable mention. Now, honestly, what I should have just done was made this a six distro list. But to be honest with you, I don't think that this last one deserves a place on the list. Not necessarily because it's not overrated. It is overrated, but I don't want to give them and their users the satisfaction of actually being a number on the list. It's petty of me, I know, but the, the honorable mention is NixOS. <laughs> okay, now, I'm sure NixOS is a fantastic distribution. I've only used it for probably about an hour or so, and that's been ages and ages ago, before it was popular. Uh, and I'm sure it's a fantastic OS. I, I, I know many, many people who use it and tell me that it's fantastic. In fact, there are approximately 30 different users in my Discord right now who are using NixOS, if not many, many more, and all of them constantly tell me that NixOS is something that I have to try. I have to try it. Matt, you have to try NixOS. You have to try NixOS. I swear to God that the NixOS users are much more pushy about their distribution than the Arch Linux users ever were. Now, that is saying something because the Arch Linux guys are a meme for pushing their distribution onto other people. They are. We all know that. And yet, I don't think that I ever experienced the level of pushiness from Arch that I have heard and seen and experienced from the NixOS community. Now, again, I'm sure NixOS is a fantastic distribution, but it's definitely not a distribution that requires me to use it just because it has a configuration file. And I happen to like configuration files, so therefore I should use it. I'm not exactly sure that... The, <laughs> I, I, I get in so much trouble when I talk about NixOS because I, I have come to the point where the users have gotten so pushy about me trying it that I've decided not to try it. I'm being very petty about it is what I'm saying. But anyways, that's an honorable mention. I did not want to give them the satisfaction of being number one, even though... It probably is number one in, in my mind. So that's it for this video. If I haven't pissed everybody off, let me know in the comments section. I'll I'll, I'll try harder next time. Uh, I'll, maybe I'll I should maybe I should put Ubuntu on this list, or I don't know. I'll I'll come, I'll come up maybe Debian. 
I, I, I could come up with some more to piss everybody else off. I, I'm sure I could come up with a few more. So in the comment section below, let me know your thoughts on all this. I'd really appreciate it. You, if you haven't already and uh, you actually did like this video, I'd appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up. It'd really, really help the channel. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. I'm also on Ko-fi, which is another place like Patreon, but apparently a little bit better. You can head on over there if you want to support me. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, again, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so much. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.